Now you could do this with your particular calibers or however you want and it can go in a million different ways but this is how I segregate mine. So, zero to 300 yards, what's important to me? One, that the caliber is good enough, that it's flying at least 2200 feet per second. The next thing is recoil, because with a heavy recoil gun, I cannot put as much kinetic energy on target. It's better for me to have less recoil within 300 yards. So a lot of the calibers I'm particularly using, which are, M193 556, 55 grain 243, 168 grain 308, and 300 PRC. Out of those, 300 PRC, very poor for recoil. It's got a lot of recoil, so it's not really a good choice for inside of 300 yards. Next we got 308. We're getting better, but it's not so good. It's still a bit heavy on recoil. Really fast follow-up shots are pretty difficult to do. Then we got the 243. A lot better than the 308 on recoil, but it's still a bit heavy. 556. Five, that is the best I have for choice when it comes to recoil, so that would be the particular cartridge I would use inside of 300 yards. Now, 300 yards and farther, other things start to come into play. One of the big ones is time of flight on target. So what that means is how long does it take the bullet to arrive at the target? Because the faster I can get to the target, the, the wider margin of error I have. If I can get to the target really quick, there's less time for the wind to push my bullet off course, and there's less time for gravity to have its effect and my bullet to drop out of the air. So... Because 5.56 five, is really kind of running out of kinetic energy, I mean, it's, it's still got enough. It's, it's more than capable. I'm not saying it's not capable, but I believe there's better choices out there. So 5.56, five, we got point three four four time on target. 2.43, we got point zero or point three zero seven. 3.08, three oh eight point three nine three hundred three hundred PRC, we got point three four. So out of these cartridges, the two fast ones are 300 PRC and 243. Because we're still recoil limited, because we're in a close enough range where you can still make fast follow-up shots, because we're talking at what? Not even a half second yet, flight time to target. I'm going to go with the one with less recoil. So I'm going to go with the 243, 55 grain. And I probably should have broke down the cartridges. So the M193, we are looking at a 55 grain projectile. It has eh, 32 and some change for velocity, and you're looking at 0.243 for ballistic coefficient. Then we got the 243, 55 grain. You're looking at both 35 and some change, 55 grain projectile, and you're looking at 0.267 for ballistic coefficient 308, eh, about 25 and some change, maybe 2,600 feet per second, 168 grain projectile, you're looking at 0.523 for ballistic coefficient. 300 PRC, now this isn't the actual one I'm gonna run. This is actually a 225 grain, I'm going with a 230 A-tip. We are looking at, depending on, you know, barrel length, stuff like that, about 2,800 feet per second. We're looking at a 230 grain projectile, and we're looking at 0.823 for ballistic coefficiency. Not bad at all. All right, so now we're at 500 yards. Now it's starting to get to the point to where making headshots may not be the most practical thing, so I'm going to start wanting a little bit of kinetic energy. Well, obviously, 5.56 five, fell off at 300 yards. The time of flight got slower, plus it's at a longer distance, so it made sense to go to the 243. Now, at 500 yards, so the 5.56, five, we got a time, flight time of 0.67, <laughs> but we're only looking at kinetic energy of 306 foot-pounds. 243, looking at 0.596 for flight time, 
But we're only looking at 391 for kinetic energy. I mean, that's really getting down there. 308 starting to look a little bit better. We're looking at a point seven one for flight time, and we're looking at 1,100 foot-pounds for kinetic energy. 300 PRC, we're looking at point five nine for flight time. So now the PRC has taken the, the reins for flight time, and we're looking at 2,400 feet per second. So at 500 yards, at that particular range, I would be shooting a 308. 5.56 five, just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. 243, it's really kind of running out of steam. I would go 308 or 300 PRC because it's still a relatively short flight time or still under a second. I would go with 308. Now, once I hit a one second flight time on the 308, because the biggest reason I go the 308 is because it's a semi automatic platform and I can do a bunch of follow up shots. Once I hit one second on flight time, that's more than enough time to cycle the bolt or wait for the impact, see the splash, and then cycle the bolt and take a follow-up shot, depending on how far exactly we're talking here. So once we hit one second, which I can't remember what yardage it is, I think it's like 550 or 600 yards for the 308. Now I would be switching over to the 300 PRC. Let me actually check real quick. Flight time. 700 yards. That's where I'd be like, okay, the 308 no longer makes sense. It makes a whole lot more sense to go to the 300 PRC. So with my current rifles, how I would divide them up is 0 to 3, 5.56. Now, this probably doesn't need to be said, but I know if I don't, I'm going to get tore up in the comments. Yes, you can run pre different projectiles with all those cartridges. That'll give them different characteristics. But because of how I designate it and where I would use that particular projectile at, help me decide on what particular projectile I would use. Like, I could throw a really heavy 243 projectile in there and go some stupid long range, but I chose a 55 grain projectile, one, because it just rips apart armor inside of 100 yards, two, it's got a really short flight time. And because I knew when I built that rifle, I was going to set it up to particularly to operate particularly between three and 500 yards. This one gave me the best performance. I don't really care about BC at that. I just want to get to the target as quickly as possible. So I have less wind drift, less elevation to compensate for. 308, when I picked the SCAR, I was thinking more general purpose. I thought that was going to be the only big rifle I ever owned because I just didn't have that kind of cash. So I went with a general purpose projectile. I went with the 168. Yes, I could go with like a 147 or a 175 and I'll totally change the characteristics of this. But I think a 168 is a beautiful balance with the 308. You still hang on to quite a bit of your velocity, but you also hang on to quite a bit of ballistic coefficiency because it's all a balance. When you give up one, you get the other. When you give up the other, you get the one. And then of course we got your 55 grain 223 because I'm looking at open sight or red dot rifles inside of 300 yards. Without a doubt, the 55 grain M193 is king. With the 300 PRC, because I don't even really consider using this until I get to one second flight time on the 308, which would be 700 yards, it makes sense for me to maximize the BC. Because I'm limited on barrel twist, I can't go with the 250. So I'm going with the 230. Now they do have plus P loads. I'm probably not going to screw around with that because the velocity really doesn't matter. I'm just looking for maximum BC and maximum kinetic energy. But where was I? Oh yeah, 700 yards. That's when I'd switch to 300 PRC because now all of a sudden the advantages of a semi-automatic are no longer there. You're starting to get into disadvantages like your brass flying out, magazines on it. I. There's just not a whole lot of advantages to a semi-auto once you have a one second flight time. They kind of just start falling apart and they get worse and worse and worse and worse the longer flight time you have. But that is why I divide these cartridges up like I do. Inside of 300, 5.56, 5, 3 to 5, 243. General purpose, this will go a little bit farther than 5. I could probably push it out to 7 and then 
kind of wanting to switch to something else at about five, but uh, there's just not enough advantages yet to switch to a 300 PRC. And the 300 PRC kicks in at seven. Yeah, I'll zero this for 100. Yeah, I'll definitely zero this for 100, but I'm seriously not even going to put it on a range shorter than 700 unless I have no other choice. Yeah, when I'm running the rifle through its paces, it'll be inside of 700. But this will only be on ranges that are 700 or longer. But anyway, thank you for watching my videos. Uh, if you'd like to help support the channel, i got my Patreon right there. I'll also have the affiliate links in the description down below. Definitely for this knife right here. That's pretty much uh, the only thing I really rolled in this video that I can put affiliate links on for. But thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And right there is my very first mistake. It's not the action I wanted, but it's the action I can get. Oh, that's real good. My house got broken into. It's not the action I wanted, but it's the action I can get. What a guy.